Welcome everybody. Here in the UK, we are currently about halfway through our school summer holidays. So I thought I'd do a simple project with you, which is something you might even decide to do with your kids. It's a wooden egg tray, and we're going to use some wood that I've just got from B&Q, so nice and easy to get hold of. B&Q, for those of you in America, is a bit like your Home Depot. So it's just one of those huge shops that sells everything. The wood I've got is already plain, so you don't need to do any preparation. It's all ready for you. It's the 10.5 mil deep, 92 mil wide, and this particular piece is 2.4 meters long. And that cost me 12 pounds 67. Now, they do one that's just under one meter, 900 mil, that's the same dimensions otherwise, and that's £9.67, so it's only £3 cheaper, and you don't get anything like as much wood. So unless space is a real issue, um, I'd get the longer piece if I was you, because you could use it for something else. I've created a template for you as well, so that will help you make this, and I'll make sure that you can download that somewhere on the website somewhere. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to cut this to length and the full width of this, or the full length of this, is 260 millimetres or 26 centimetres. So I'm going to mark my 26. I'm going to take my tri-square and mark a line. Now we need to cut that. I'm not going to use my mitre saw. I'm going to use a hand saw because not everybody has a mitre saw. So let's get on with that. To make my cut, I'm going to use a Japanese pull saw. A Japanese pull saw is different from Western saws because it makes its cut as you pull through the wood rather than when you push. If you look closely, you'll see that the teeth are angled slightly backwards. And so that's how they're making their cut. The advantage of this is that you can have a much narrower kerf, so the actual blade is a lot thinner, which is really nice. They're actually really easy to use as well, so a great beginner's saw. To hold it in place, I'm going to use a couple of clamps. One close to where I'm cutting, and another one just a bit further down. This will stop it from sliding around. Now, there are two different teeth on these saws. You've got these really big teeth and we've got these very little teeth. This is for doing rip cuts, which are when you go along the grain of the wood. The smaller teeth is for a cross cut and that's what we're going to do. So the way I do it, and people have their own methods, but the way I like to do it is I'm just going to rest my thumb against the line and I'm going to do a couple of little pushes and it quickly gets going on that. Look for the reflection, so you'll see that the wood goes along, and if it looks like it disappears nice and neatly into the reflection, then it's nice and straight. If it's disappearing at a funny angle, then you've not got your blade straight. So whilst we're sawing, we're going to make two more cuts, and these are going to be the legs for the egg tray. We're going to measure two and a half centimetres, or 25 millimetres, in from that side. And then make our cut. And we're going to measure again. And 
and we'll come back to those later. So next we're going to mark up where we want to drill our holes for the eggs to sit in. So here's my template. We've got our holes here for the center of the drill. You could mark with a pencil if you want to. I'm going to mark using an awl or a brad awl or in fact what this is is it's actually a screwdriver that I sharpen the end of but uh, a brad awl is a sort of spike that you can use for marking things. So I'm just going to mark with a little press in each hole and that will be the center for my drill bit. If you're lucky enough to have one of these, a drill press or a pillar drill, then this would be the easiest way of making our holes. But to be fair, as this is meant to be a beginner's project and you may not have one of these, we're just going to use a normal handheld electric drill. We're also going to use a big drill bit called a Forstner bit. Now this is 35 millimeters across so it's going to make a big hole for the eggs to sit in and I'll put a link to show you where you can get these or you might decide if this is something you want to do more of to get a whole set of them but you can buy them individually so you could just get one for this project now we're going to drill our holes and we don't want to drill through into our lovely bench top so we're going to find a scrap piece of sacrificial wood that we can drill into and we don't mind if we do, it doesn't matter. We're then going to put our piece of wood on top and secure it with a clamp. We'll probably have to move the clamp at some point because it might be in the way, but for the moment we'll do that. We're then going to put our point into our little hole that we made with our awl get your drill as vertical as you can. There are gadgets you can buy that kind of help you, but just have a little look around, try to get it as vertical as possible. The nice thing about these drill bits is it sort of becomes obvious if they're straight once you get started. So let's have a go. Next we need to do some sanding. We want to get these rough edges and splinters off here and also we don't want this to be such a uh, sharp edge. We want to smooth it over and round it over a little bit. So we've got some sandpaper. I'm starting off with some P80 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to fold it up and there's no easy way of doing this. You just have to spend some time And now I'm going to switch to a smoother grit. So this is 120. And I'm just going to go over them again. Now that that's done, let's take a look at our two pieces of wood that are going to be the feet. So we want to sand those down a bit as well. You can see we've got quite rough edges from where we uh, sawed it. I'm using sandpaper on a block this time because I want to keep it as flat as possible. Let's we'll take these burrs away. Good. These will be glued onto here to help it stand. we're doing really well. We've cut out our holes for the eggs to sit in and we've got our two little feet. We're going to glue them with wood glue. The sort of wood glue that I use is called tight bond, but this is not the sort of thing you need to use if you've uh, not done it before. Just a straightforward PVA wood glue will be absolutely fine. Flip your piece of wood upside down 
and we're just going to run some glue along each of these edges. You don't need very much. We don't want to then have a load of glue squeezing out the edges that then needs to be cleaned up. I may have put too much on this, in fact. Place them as accurately as you can up to the edge. If you get any glue squeezing out the corners, you can use your nail or your finger or a little bit of a wet cloth before it sets. It makes it easier to get off. If you don't have clamps, that's okay because all we're going to do is put a little bit of weight on the top of this just to keep it in place. I've got an old sander here. It's not super heavy, but it's heavy enough. I'm just going to place it on top. That will be plenty to keep the glue so that it sets nicely. And we'll come back to that later. So the glue has set now, so let's take a look. And there we have it. I'm just going to give it a final sanding and then perhaps a little bit of wax to protect it. It's already quite smooth, so I'm gonna start at 120 and just quickly go over it. Then work my way through the different grades. So after that, I'm gonna go for a 180. and then a 240. And you can go higher if you want, make it even smoother, but that feels really quite nice. And to finish it off, you can use any sort of uh, finishing treatment. You could even um, uh, stain it a darker color if you wanted to look like walnut or oak or something like that. Um, I'm going to use my own um, tongue oil and beeswax finish that I use, but you could just do uh, pure mineral oil, uh, pure tongue oil, um, anything you like. So I'm just gonna put a coat of this on and we'll be finished. And we're done. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please press the like and subscribe buttons they really do genuinely help the channel in fact some of my friends were slightly concerned about pressing subscribe because they thought they'd get loads of emails and spam you don't what you're really doing is just following me so nothing will happen but it is really helpful to me so please if you've enjoyed it I'd love it if you would press that button also if you do actually make this please comment and tell me how it went. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, thanks for watching.